Hey, I'm Kathy Fetke here in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee at a women's retreat. And I'm gonna be interviewing the women here about the opportunities they see out there today. These are a lot of powerful, successful women. And I know there's so many people who are just paralyzed in fear, not sure what to do. So I thought I would just interview some of these successful women here about what kind of opportunities they are seeing. This is Bigger Pockets on the Market presented by Fundrise. So let's take a look. What kind of opportunities do you see out there today? Oh, wow. Too many opportunities. The shiny objects syndrome is so true. Like you can do flips, you can do rooming houses, you can do wholesaling. There's so many things. If anybody's ever like, oh, what, what can I do? There's there's so many opportunities. Yeah. Which ones are you focusing on? We are just flipping right now. We're on our seventh flip in less than a year. In less than a year, yeah. a report just came out saying that flippers are making far less money than they used to and many are losing money. So what, have you felt affected? No, I mean, I think it's because of our market too. You have to pick a market where you're actually able to sell the homes. <laughs> so like we have about like less than a month of inventory. So as soon as the homes go up, like our last one was on market for like six days. It sells really quickly and and that's the, the faster you can sell it, the less holding costs that you have, of course. What market are you in? Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville? Yeah, right down right the road. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't okay. have a long drive. <laughs> what do you think is causing the, the demand? We haven't had enough houses here for a very long time. It's been since 2014 when they kind of halted the, the builders and everything here. So that helps, but also, I mean, we don't have state income tax. So a lot of people are like, oh, well, this is a nice place to go. No, like fewer taxes is cool. I did not know that. Okay, <laughs> great. Any last words of advice for people who think that the world is ending? The world's been ending for a very long time. So I suggest that you stop worrying about it and you just make a good life while it's still here. Perfect, <laughs> thank you. In this economy, a lot of people are terrified. Are you, are you terrified or are you looking for opportunity? I'm looking for opportunities. I have an office building, which I know everybody is so scared of right now, but it's an awesome way to support small businesses. So I have an office building that's about 10 by 10 office spaces and then rent them out individually. This way I can maximize the rent per square foot the most and then help a bunch of small businesses and I don't have to worry about vacancies. There's always going to be chiropractors, CPAs, psychologists that are looking for a space. So I'm looking more to get into that area and continue to grow and help other businesses. Most of the headlines are talking about how office is the worst investment right now. So what's the difference between what you're doing and what we're reading? Yeah, I think about what we're reading is these huge downtown areas that have thousands of square feet that they're looking to rent to one tenant. And yes, it's definitely more work to split that up, but that's something that different that I'm willing to take on is splitting that up, having more tenants, but then also being able to, like I said, help more businesses too. Yeah, it seems like the big difference is with those tall office buildings, it's people who can do jobs that they could do anywhere. Yes, yes. So businesses are learning that they don't need that that space anymore. They don't have to pay for that space. But there is certain business that can't ever be outsourced, right? So how do you find your tenants? Word of mouth, actually. We don't do any advertising, but if I did, I would look at, you know, LoopNet, a small local areas like the Chamber of Commerce, Craigslist, probably Facebook Marketplace. And yes, looking for those tenants that do need an office space and can't do their job at home. Are you seeing any difference in the lease rates or the vacancy rates? Yeah, we don't have any vacancy right now. And there's always people that are starting new businesses that absolutely need that space that can't do it at home. So from what I'm seeing, it's only growing from here. That's amazing. Yeah. Such a different perspective. What kind of cap rate can you expect? I would say at minimum about 8%, but I think it could maybe go up to about 9 or 10 that's great. Yeah. Uh, can't complain. No. Wonderful. So are you concerned about the economy or is this working for you? This is working great. And I think a lot of these businesses that are renting these spaces are very recession proof. Yeah, maybe you won't go to the chiropractor as much if you're feeling a little bit more pressure from the economy, but you are still going to need to get your taxes done. More people are going to be needing the mental health aspect of things. Lawyers will always need lawyers. They'll always need space and more than likely not gonna be working at home. So I live in San Diego and we have a portfolio of properties in the Tucson and Phoenix market. And what's your asset class? We have mobile home parks and RV parks. So what's the market like out there right now? Are you seeing opportunity uh, and what kind of opportunity? So yeah, we are seeing some opportunity. The deal flow has been slower than normal, but I feel like 
in the last 30 to 60 days, more deals have started to come to the surface and we're in escrow on one now. So I think there's opportunities coming and as interest rates maybe stay or slightly go up again, more people might get afraid that values will start to go down and more properties all come on the market then. It's so hard to predict in this economy. Yeah, it's, it's so different than a lot of us in, in residential, you know, we can really track that. But what do you think is causing more opportunities to come on market? Well, I don't know if it's a combination of, you know, mom and pops just kind of thinking that values might go down substantially. So they don't want to lose out more on values that they potentially already have. It's hard to say. It could be a combination of a lot of things, whether it's a good time. People tend to move properties this time of year too, instead of in the winter or holiday time. And how do you know there's demand for RV parks? Well, when, you know, a property does come up, uh, there's quite a few people that bid on it. And, you know, with the bigger players in the market, they're pretty aggressive on some of the nicer stuff that comes up in the Phoenix and Tucson metros. As we make offers on properties that come available, we're competing against those big guys. And it makes it challenging sometimes to close properties in the time frames that those guys are able to cut checks and buy properties. Yeah, we're still able to find deals and get stuff. Maybe stuff that they aren't seeing or? Yeah, stuff that they aren't seeing or relationships we've created with brokers. We also have some VAs and an in-house guy calling off market and cold calling owners to see if they would be interested in selling. So that's helpful. And we usually get one to two deals that way a year with families who just didn't realize it was an opportunistic time to potentially sell and we would offer them what we would offer them and sometimes we find that people just don't know and so by cold calling owners to present the opportunity there becomes a deal out of that. Would you say you're optimistic about the future or cautious? I think we're optimistic. I mean, I, I think that even though we're optimistic there won't be challenges to overcome but you know, uh, life's a roller coaster, and I think that with interest rates going up or down, I, I think we'll be able to do deals no matter what. So I feel good about it. What kind of opportunities are you seeing out there today? I am actually seeing quite a bit of opportunity right now, and I think a lot of that is due to the high interest rate that scares some people off. And when there's fear, there's opportunity. And so I'm actually finding quite a few on market and off market deals in the current state. What kind of deals are you looking for? So I'm a single family investor. I buy long-term rentals. I have a few midterm and short-term rentals as well. And that's my comfort level. And so I think, you know, that's kind of the area that I'll keep focusing on for now because I know it and I know it well. And so in this market, I think it's the right strategy for me to stick to. So compared to say a year and a half ago when there was a frenzy, yes. a buying frenzy, what's it like out there today price-wise and competition-wise? And, and cap rate returns and so forth. What's different? Yes, I would say in Kansas City, we are seeing pretty much the same thing we saw a year and a half ago. You know, I'm also an agent. And so we'll see properties going for 30 to 60,000 over asking right now. So buyers are still out there in the Kansas City market. It is still hot. That's why I think it's important to have multiple ways to find deals. And like I mentioned, I also do off market deals. So when you're looking off the market, you limit that competition. And so you have more room for negotiating. But yeah, I'm seeing the frenzy is back. Why do you think that is when rates are double what they were? Inventory is low. And so for all of the buyers that are out there, there's not enough houses for them. And so there's competition in those types of markets. I do think there are certain markets where you know, that opportunity isn't there, but Kansas City is not one of them. All right. Any last words of advice for people who are nervous that there's a housing crash around the corner? The way I look at it is no matter what the market's doing, I'm going to put food on the table for my family. And I think if you look at it from that angle, some things that you can do is diversify your skill set and your income. And so those are a few things that I like to do. Um, as I mentioned, I'm an agent, I wholesale, and I have my portfolio. So I have multiple streams of income. So if something happens with one of those businesses, I've got other businesses to rely on. Same with my investment strategy. I diversify, you know, I don't just have all long terms. I don't just have all short terms. So just having those different strategies and skill sets, I think you can thrive in any market. So overall, I think a lot of the women here are excited. They're seeing opportunity. And because so many people are experienced in doing what they do, they're just doing more of that regardless of what the market's doing. They're still finding deals, clarifying their Bible, 
box and going for it. I'm Kathy Fetke here for Bigger Pockets on the Market, presented by Fundrise.